Welcome back. You're still on the Healthy Morning, and it's time for In Focus. That's the time where we deal with pertinent issues confronting us as a nation. Today, I have a special guest, and I always call him a special guest. I'll introduce him in a jiffy. The whole of last week, I was doing the introduction before I do the topic, but today, because how special he is, I'll do the topic. I'll do the topic before I do the introduction. We're looking at security, and I started this from yesterday. In fact, Friday, I touched on it briefly. The different types of security that we're looking at. But today, I'll zoom into one area. That is kidnapping. But before I go into the kidnapping, I'd like to remind you, within your own settings, how conscious are you when it comes to security? And I say that starting from our attitude or behavior as, as, as a nation, we walk with our back-facing vehicles, oncoming vehicles, and that's also a threat when it comes to security because anything could happen and the car will run you down. Now, when you look at what happens, there are state institutions that are organizing um, the Ghana card, which is a registration. It's done in the open, and I touched on that yesterday extensively on C-Stake, that we allow people to go in the open and give their personal data in this day and age where somebody could be standing next to you and record all the information that you're given. And then when they go, they become, they become you. And so somebody's operating as you. But the state institution did not consider the security implications. And so they allowed that. And they're doing it in open places, in front of gutters and in schools and all that. And where children, at this time that kidnapping is going on, we're actually registering in schools where children below the age of five are running around. Who knows who is standing next? But let me now come back to the studio and then we'll zoom into today's topic, kidnapping. Has it become the new trend? And why is it so? Adam Bona is my guest. Thank you. Thank you. This is how I started the breakfast. So I had to give you the first course. To start. We're looking at kidnapping, but I touched on security. Yeah. Would you want to eat that first and then we go straight into kidnapping and what is happening currently? Yeah, well, uh, thank you very much, and good Pleasure. morning to the viewers. Thank you. I, I, I realize a lot of people watch uh, HS TV. Yes, HS yeah. TV. Uh, usually, when I come here, I get a lot of people uh, sending, you sending me a lot of information, mm -hmm. sharing mm -hmm. what I said and how I should have said it, and mm -hmm. praising me. You know, mm -hmm. so you know, and all that sometimes. And so uh, it is important that I acknowledge that. But I think coming down to your intro with regards to how we do things in this country, uh, from the standpoint of probably the nation, the nation in one fold would have security, you know, those clothed with power, you know, the police, Ghana police service telling us to be, you know, uh, careful with the way we show wealth, the way we show off, the way we put our information out there. But when it comes to uh, certain things that the nation has to do for us, they don't care. You want to register me. What stops the nation from having an all-year round registration? That's right. That way there won't be the need for me to kill. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, this, so day, like 10, yes. this day and age, how many people hmm. go and queue in front of banks to have a bank account? Hmm. You go there, ask at one you want. Hmm. If you don't want it again, you call it off. Hmm. And so let's have electoral commission offices all over the country with the ability to, once you are 18, if you are 18 today, hmm. you have a proof that you are 18, you walk in there and they register you. But we still do things as if we are in the probably 18th, 19th century. Technology makes it possible. I mean, what is stopping us from doing that? You also realize that on the part of uh, parents, you know, this day and age, because of the advent of technology, a lot of parents, uh, when children are sleeping, they take photos. Children's school, they take photos and put it on social media. And I always say, uh, you know, very soon the children, when they grow, begin to sue parents mm -hmm. because then uh, you might have to ask for that child's permission to put certain information about that child there. 
You put my picture out when I was a baby in, in diapers. Yes. And you put it into... You put, and the, so, yeah. let's be careful because some of these things will put the, our children and family in harm's way. Kidnapping is on the rise. We'll come so there. So, I've been giving you an itinerary yes. of when they are traveling and when they are arriving, where they have yes. actually got to, and the next flight. Yes, where it's and going to. you know how the movement is. And I'm thinking that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you don't know, go onto your phone and shut off all those things. Yeah. At least, yeah. you, you know, it allows you to shut off some of the things. And so, for me, mm -hmm. these are things that, as a nation, because we don't have any security policy. A bigger security policy. No one uh, is working on that. That's what I can say. I mean, con I, I just couldn't have let this slip by where people are hiring helps at home. And today they say I shouldn't call them house help, but I should call them assistants because they, they, they have actually evolved. And they come in, nobody has a database collecting people's information where they're coming from. They probably might have worked in Adam's home and stolen some exactly. money. So was kicked out and then comes to me exactly and then i employ quickly because i'm desperately exactly. in need of that person and they are stealing from people and exactly. harming people's children exactly and one thing i mean i hire people too for my home but we maybe because of my background they are checked background check your background is checked and there has to be a guarantor but two guarantors would have to you know authenticate and you have to check and usually those who hire them uh, what's the name? The agents. Mm -hmm. You, the agents sometimes uh, will tell these people who are looking for a job. When you go for interview, and they ask it. you, mm -hmm. say that the the reason why you are unemployed is because your last place of employment, the owners uh, of the house or facility, traveled mm -hmm. abroad. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure those who are listening to me, mm -hmm. it is one thing that is not coming up a lot. Mm -hmm. You want to hire why? Your last place, what happened and you left? Oh, no, they, they, traveled. they traveled ab abroad. But I think before? that they, those who are close with the powers to make sure these things work should make sure that the agents are registered. There's a database that captures, you know, what people are doing. And most importantly, uh, a lot of crimes are not also in, reported in this country. In this country yeah. We yeah. try to resolve these crimes by ourselves. Yeah. In other places, you need to go for... Uh, you know, uh, crime check. They need to check and make sure you haven't committed. The fingerprint. You everybody. know, make sure you haven't committed crime. any crime before you can work with even children. But over here, it is not there. That will be another topic where yeah, we go yeah. into because if we go on, we're not going to finish. Yes, so yes, now yes, let's yes, put yes. the main the main meal on the plate and let's start it. We're actually talking about kidnapping, and the last few months i mean this kidnapping thing we all heard about nigeria that it was it was rampant in nigeria until recently it's come to ghana and in the last few let's say in the last few months it's become a daily affair the niger the, the takradi girls up till now we can't find them and also the canadians who were also abducted or another concern but for some reason, they have been rescued. I don't know what went into it. Is kidnapping the new thing? And why, if, if I should ask those two questions? I would with. say, yes, it's, it's kidnapping and violent crime. It's become the new thing. It's become the new thing before because you realize, just like the president alluded to, oh, in West Africa, Ghana is the safest place. Mm -hmm. We are the safest among our, you know, compatriots right. or, or among our, you know, sub-regional counterparts. It is true. But, you know, that also comes in, in its way. Uh, a lot of uh, things that probably we, we have not factored into our uh, safe uh, environment. Because if Togo is boiling, mm -hmm. Benin is boiling, Cote d'Ivoire is boiling, mm -hmm. Uh, Ivory, what do you call it? Uh, Liberia. Liberia, yeah. Sierra Leone, Guinea. Burkina Faso, Guinea, Chad, Cameroon, mm. Niger. Mm. If all of these countries are in turmoil, Mali, all of them yeah. are in turmoil. Yeah. Even Gambia, you too. Mm. Yeah. And uh, we are sandwiched in between these countries. Then you would know that there will be an influx of people who are running away from conflict and crime. And it would come, they would come with others who are miscreant among them. So it is how we deal with this that probably would 
bring about how ourselves we don't begin to join the the the, the league of nations that one will say have failed mm. so it's a new thing because then in ghana uh you know anyone who is my age or your age would know that uh, you could get up in the morning yeah. and literally just go around mm -hmm. it didn't matter your position in society you could jog you could, you could walk. jog yeah. i mean we grew up with very affluent yeah. people in our society yeah. just getting up with their white boxer shorts shorts. you know white uh, shorts the one with, uh, like the tennis yes yeah. and they are and they are you know and they are just walking, walking. yeah see somebody and say, yeah, just you know there's a big man there is that accountant is that uh, teacher, teacher here, here, here a lawyer that lawyer here that uh, you know you know and this pe they could just walk with people literally yeah. today it's become difficult because even broad day when there's light when there's Sun I mean you yeah, could easily be robbed you Robin could easily be robbed Robin. even in your home yeah. so it tells you that these people, some of them have come in to teach our people that no, this man going there is a hot commodity. So if you can grab this man, instead of now taking the phone from you or taking your wristwatch mm -hmm. or something, money from you, no, those are not pricey uh, commodities they want. You are the commodity they want. So they grab you mm -hmm. because they want to make good money. If you look at this Canadian kidnapping, they demanded for uh, a million or so. Okay. Eventually, they narrow it down to eight fifty, eight hundred. Yeah. That is thousand dollars. And so, uh, our peaceful nature makes people walk around. I mean, I have. I mean, I have family members who stay in Nigeria. Right. You said it. Yes, yeah. I have family yeah. members who stay in Nigeria. And the picture is different. And the, you know, and they will tell you that you see when they come home, tell you, you know what, uh, Ghana, we are we are blessed. Because you won't have a light-skinned person just get up and stop by to buy a coffee broke man. Kokoni and Katia. Yeah. No. No, 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 no. Because no. somebody sees you as what? Nobody like sees you to be some, some gold. gold yeah. Or, you know, gold, yeah. diamond. Kidnap you and... Kidna uh, quickly, you are gone. Ask for ransom. Ask for ransom. And so, it is something that is happening and has been going on for many years for us. It is now catching up with us because there's turmoil in Nigeria. As we speak, I'm sure if you monitor the cable news, the people, people have been killed. About 30 people or so have been bombed mm. in Nigeria just like yesterday or so. Mm. And so people are running from mm. conflict. People, people just want to, you know, live in an environment where they can do their business. So you have a lot of Nigerians coming in doing very good business in this country. And you also have a lot of them who have come in they are, not they are not interested in, what do you call it? Uh, was it you who was telling me that if I stand at the, the, the highway? Yes. From probably the, the Darwinia area. Yes. You and, see them coming in in buses. In no, buses? Buses. No one is saying they shouldn't come. But mine is that even the Nigerian community, mm. those legally doing the right things here, have questioned, you know, the, the way things are evolving. Because then whatever... The uh, brothers and sisters come here to do negatively yeah. affect yeah. those of them yeah. who have melted, who have integrated. You know, we have yeah. we have intermarriages. We have we we have lived with. I mean, we yeah, are yeah. we for are there. I mean, for God knows, God knows many, how long. Many, many years. For many years. So those who have integrated and you can call them these are now Ghanaians are now probably being affected because leadership has failed to track these people who are coming and weed out the bad ones. And say, no, you are bad. We don't want you to come and cause trouble for all of us, Nigerians and Ghanaians and everybody who lives in this country. That's what, go on Sunday, they are coming in. And one thing, the psychological pool, when you talk about migration, mm -hmm. the psychological pool, the more difficult or the more, you know, you hear about these people, some people uh, are being talked about, and so, you know, you people go home, go home, the more most of them will come. Why is it so? It is so because I think it's just human. Yeah. That the more harder you make it for people to survive, the more they find ways to survive. survive. 
you gave a scenario of offset, and I think that it was quite appropriate. Yes. The vi the countries that make visas very difficult yes. are the ones who have many people go. Exactly. Because the more difficult they make, if you like let the U.S. embassy bounce one million Ghanaians this year, mm. the following year ten million Ghanaians will go and apply. They want to know exactly. They want to know what is there. You are stopping, stopping people there. from going. Mm -hmm. So those who have been there, when they go and they can't say, so there's nothing there. Those who have been there, they will go and come. Even when you say there is nothing there, they people are going through the Sahara Desert. People are dying in their numbers just to get to Italy. Just to get to Italy. Someone is living in beautiful home in Ghana, leaves that house, travels through the Sahara to Libya, gets kidnapped, mm -hmm. pays his way, calls him, they give money, pays his way, jumps into some mm -hmm. uh, floating, or, or some floating mm -hmm. uh, dinghy, and then the next thing, the person is perished, and the families are in Ghana, and say, oh, my family member is in Spain. Is in Spain. Mm -hmm. And so mine is, it is that psychological thing. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be managed very well. Mm -hmm. Ghanaians and Nigerians, I would say, we are not bad people. We've lived together for many years. So it's wrong to actually blame ev the Nigerians. It's wrong to blame every Nigerian. Nigerian. I can bet my last password, and research indicates that, you know, 99% uh, of Nigerians are doing good business, uh, have integrated. Mm -hmm. But of course, the 1% who are uh, into nefarious activities and doing crime and prostitution and all the things that our law doesn't permit. I mean, of course, it's that statement that uh, bad, uh, you know, news sells. That's right. It, yeah. That is what is playing yeah. out. Yeah. Bad so, news uh, sells. Dog bites man is not is not news. No. But when man bites the dog, it becomes big news. Big news. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. uh, this is this is the scenario that is playing out here. And so it is time we need to look at it and say what measures must we put in place. So what happened in Swami is, I mean, is, is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. What happened in Swami shouldn't have happened. If you ask me, I would say it shouldn't have happened because, you see, the, these people, are, they, they have their shops. They are running businesses. And so let's not begin to attack Nigerians at all. Whether they've committed a crime or they have not committed a crime, our law does not permit us to attack, to attack them. That, I think, is... It's so wrong. There is no explanation I, that I can give beyond that. It is, it is demeaning. Mm. You can imagine that someone accosts you wrongly. I've gone to chase somebody's girl, mm. and the person is not happy with me. I'm a Nigerian. Mm. And the person finds me in that community. community. And there are some children around. And the person says, this person wants to kidnap. The next minute... Because of the media reportage, people would pounce on you and you can't... They'll lynch you. They'll lynch you because they have not investigated. They, instead of allowing the security agencies to investigate, they haven't done that. And so for me, I think that what is happening in Swami, if they are listening to this network, which I believe they are doing, or those who are listening should let everybody know that it is completely wrong. It could be any of us. That's like it happened to Major Mama. Yeah. An innocent citizen. So let's make sure the law works. You grab somebody, you think the person is committing a crime. Law enforcement. Let the law enforcement agencies deal with it. The law does not permit us to met out those type of street justice to, uh, or street injustice injustice. to what do you call it, like uh, innocent. Street injustice. Yes, street injustice to uh, innocent people. And so for me, I've had somebody in Nigeria with uh, somebody in Kumasi yeah. with, hey, why should that happen? Mashe, why should that happen? Those who are doing that are criminals. They are worse than the Nigerian kidnappers. Adam, from where you're sitting, how can we put an end or probably reduce it to a certain level because it's now taking center stage. I, how do we, how do we, I, I think what needs to be done, I've said it elsewhere that the, the fortunately for the Nigerian community, they have very good leaders, right. elected leaders mm -hmm. who lead them. And I was with one of them on Ghana Connect Joy FM and he spoke in a way that calmed me down. 
It meant that there are so many of them who are very sensible among their leaders. And so the leadership of this country should come down to the level of the Nigerian uh, community leaders. They are national association leaders and what have you. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have regional leaders, the regional, you know, elected leaders, they have chiefs. Come down to that level, the foreign affairs minister, the national security minister, the interior minister, the IGP, the CID, all of these people should include these people in their discussions. Because, you see, they know yeah. who amongst them are the criminals. Because they live in the community. They live in the, the community. Leaders in the so community. if we can give these people some amount of power mm. and say, if you are a Nigerian and you come, apart from registering with the embassy, if you live in, let's say, East Ligon, Adenta, uh, Kaneshi, Kaneshi this area is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Ayawaso I, or whatever. Mm. So register with... Register mm. with your uh, association. Mm. When that happens, the association will then vet you to know that you have registered. Mm. If you are a landlord and you want to rent your house to this person and the person has come with, uh, something that looks like a work permit or mm. residence permit. Check with the immigration service. Check with the association, the, the leadership within that community to make sure that this person, you know, is, is a proper Nigerian who is not coming to cause trouble for the Nigerian community. Who are doing, doing, yeah. good doing and genius. so these are some of the things. Apart from that, at the... The government level, mm -hmm. I think I've raised it before. I wrote an article about that. I spoke about it. It was published. Government to government. This is the becoming... Ghanaian government, Nigeria. Ghanaian government. government. Starting from their representative here, which is here. the ambassador yes. here. Government should connect to President Buhari. Mm -hmm. Let's see how this kanka can be stopped. Otherwise, it can escalate to something can else. Because Ghanaians live there. Yes, Ghanaians live in Nigeria. Even though one will say... Uh, if Ghanaians live in Nigeria and they commit crime, punish them. Mm. If Nigerians live here and they commit crime, punish, punish them. them. I think that the Nigerian ambassador has, I've seen his press release, mm. and I think mm. po portions of it very condescending and, you know, playing the MPP and DC politics, mm. where, bipolar you know, where uh, there are also Ghanaians living in Nigeria. Nigeria. I, I mean, as a, rep a true representative mm. of the Nigerian states, mm. When there is an issue, you don't begin to, you know, conjecture. You don't begin to uh, speak in a way that would infuriate sometimes your host. Because would you say that is not a language of a diplomat? No, I don't think so. I think that uh, he might have a case, mm -hmm. but the way he, you know, the framed, point, yeah. he coined whatever mm -hmm. he put out there, mm -hmm. to me, very sad. Especially when people are upset. People are upset. Mm. You, are, you are blaming the media. Mm. <laughs> I haven't seen him in all this period. Call the media, yourself, everybody, mm. your reporters, mm. into a room or visit your media house to come and tell you why Nigerians are in Ghana. Maybe the media doesn't know why Nigerians are coming to Ghana. So he should come to your media house. Come to HSTV, Health and Safety, come here. And say, you know, our people are here and they are faced with security safety challenges. You are a health and safety channel. So we are coming to tell you that this is why we are here. And therefore, we want to live with peacefully. Ghanaians peacefully. Yeah. But when you just write a press statement, mm. you know, publish it there, and you say that they are Ghanaians, so are you then inferring that what, that is, happening what is happening here mm. will happen to would have to happen in, to like, Ghanaians in, in Nigeria? Nigeria. That to me, that's I think not diplomatic. That is not diplomatic. Mm. Diplomats don't speak that way. Unfortunately, we yes. Yeah. So I mean, now we, we we would come. It's that that what I was trying to do was to have a, a foundation, and the kidnapping has been linked to Nigeria. And I started with my preamble where I talked about we were, we've all known Nigeria yeah. for kidnapping, but now it's in Ghana. From where you sit, what what do you see? And are we able to stop this? Because Amrobri started, it went on, it hasn't even stopped, and we haven't been able to 
hold a bull by the horn and say, look, it's come to an end. Today you hear it here, they're still attacking people on highways. The kidnapping has started. We're still running around. We hear comments coming from CID bosses, now persons in national security are also commenting that we know where the kidnapped girls are. It's all muddy. Paint a picture for me to understand what is going on when it comes to our kidnapping. What is going on is one of confusion. If you look from uh, the infamous uh, press conference by the... Head of the CID? No, information minister. Okay. Information minister after, after the kidnapping. Kidnapping. Of the Canadian? He, I, of the Canadian. Right. I think he shouldn't have spoken. <laughs> should have allowed the tactical unit people to speak. Then government can put, add a bit of flesh and clarity to some of the things. Mm -hmm. A bit of, I mean, a lot of confusion. And I say this and I repeat again that until such a time that we have that big policy, security policy document, we will not know who must act, who should do what. And so we have a situation where uh, we actually don't know the problem we are dealing with mm -hmm. because this is a new uh, type of crime. Right. And uh, if you ask police officers in Ghana, uh, how many of them when they went to police training school were taught anything kidnapping mm -hmm. or uh, being able to negotiate to free uh, hostages. Uh, hostages or freeing people who have been kidnapped. Uh, they don't know. Or being able to spot, uh, you know, a, a victim's family coming to the police station and saying that my relation has been uh, abducted or uh, missing. And therefore, you when, when you tick uh, maybe six out of the ten boxes, it means that this person is likely to have been kidnapped. Mm. We don't have that. Because when you do the checklist, okay, the person left, and this, that you check all of them, and there are 10 boxes, and you take six correct, six come out as legit. It means that this is a case that immediately you should treat it as a possible kidnapping Kidnapping. case. They don't have it. So training mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. If the officers who are supposed to be keeping the peace are not trained to deal with kidnapping How issue, they, they can't deal with it. You look at immigration service itself. They, they don't have the resources required of them to do what is expected. Hmm. So they're so, working overtime here. Exactly. I mean, I was in Hamile uh, in December. I think I said it on this network before the issue happened in Hamile. In Hamile yeah. I was in Hamile and I walked literally to, I, we drove hmm. into Hamile and drove back. We went, uh, sorry, drove to Burkina mm -hmm. and drove back to Ghana. Mm -hmm. And when you are in Hamile, some net some of our networks don't actually work. They they tell you you are you are in roaming mode. Mm -hmm. And so mine is that if I, I could just go, I, it was just open. Mm -hmm. It's just some structure there. Well, uh, well a goodbye, goodbye, and welcome. welcome. And you are asking mm -hmm. this day and age, I could just go mm -hmm. and come. Mm -hmm. So no wonder people are coming in and it is on we have unapproved routes. So there is a lot of confusion. We don't have clear-cut plan with regards to how to deal with this new wave of crime. Now we are beginning to see a certain trend in crime, which is also new. Where, confiscated. where the, the, uh, uh, the suspect mm -hmm. would break into a home. They would do target breaking. They break into a home where there are women. Mm. And when they are done, they inflict on the women, they rape them. And you know why this is new? A bit. I mean, when I say new, new. it's new in our in, jurisdiction. In our jurisdiction, largely, mm. and they do that because the victims would not want to report, that they and they would not want to be witnesses because of the stigma that comes when people who have been raped. raped. Okay. And so these are things that we are struggling within to deal with. And so the confusion is what is made it, making this whole thing very muddy. And uh, just like I, I mean, I, I think back room before we offset, I was talking about these alerts that have been issued by this, uh, the UK, uh, you know, Australia and, and Canada. Canada yeah. I have repeatedly said that Ghana to a very large extent, I mean Accra to a very large extent is more safer than in London. To a very large extent, mm. because we are having mm. a lot of knife attacks in, in London. London. Yeah. Just, uh, bef I think, two days ago, two, yeah. three people were, boys were killed mm. in London. And how many people have been knifed and killed in, in, in Ghana, Ghana mm. or in Accra? Yeah. But you see, it is the way and manner they are able to deal with these issues swiftly. And the way and manner resources are committed. Right to dealing with these issues. But in our case, no, we don't have any situation like that. Where 
have our ambassador in the UK said something. No, Ghanaian exactly. Also, he has the this, uh, this, uh, this is what I always say. You see, when you look at yourself as inferior, hmm. then you are afraid to speak out. Nothing stops our ambassadors in, in Nigeria, our ambassadors in the Cote d'Ivoire, and all these countries, including the United Kingdom, from issuing travel alerts. I have people walk into my office, truck drivers, who drove into Mali and had their vehicles taken from them from jihadist groups, bent them, and these are Ghanaians. I have one I'm dealing with at the moment. He went to Nigeria, the northern part of Nigeria, he loaded relief items. Mm. They caught them, chased them away, and stole all the things and bent the articulator truck. Mm. These are Ghanaians. So how do we have a representative in Nigeria? How many alerts have we seen? Do we have a representative in the United Kingdom warning young children or ch people who are sending their children to the United on Kingdom knife crime. on knife crimes, for instance? And so mine is that they are a bit, I mean, they are more responsible to their nationals more than we do. Mm. And so you see the Canadians? Yeah. You had the whole Canadian, I'm told, the whole, they had a cabinet meeting on this. And they had to bring in people mm. from Canada. They had to take them through uh, Heathrow, United Kingdom, mm. and had the chartered fly. jet liner to fly them to wherever, Toronto, wherever, wherever they were going to. My sir, are you telling me that if me, I'm kidnapped in Cote d'Ivoire? Will there be a cabinet meeting? <laughs> you say, would there be a bicycle to rescue, to come and pick me? No. The Takradi girls have been kidnapped for months. For months. That is what I'm and saying. Um, that is what I'm saying. And I've said it repeatedly. The president spoke about kidnappings recently. I think he made a comment in, uh, what's the name? Australia? Uh, not Australia. In one of the countries, that's Switzerland or wherever, spoke briefly about kidnapping. But in Ghana, on the home soil, his, the statement he's made is one minute, 25 seconds about kidnapping. That's he normally not good talks to Ghanaian citizens outside. Not... Those of us here. Exactly. Because he's talking to Ghanaian citizens outside. And we are here. We are here. We are suffering it. Over there. You see, even though Ghana will still somehow be responsible and make sure their welfare is catered for. I am in Ghana, so who's taking care of me? I'm paying taxes. Who's taking care of me? And so mine is that I think our leaders, not that I think, our leaders are not responsible at all when it comes to us. It rains. A bit of, you know, one meter of rain and people die. And this doesn't provoke any national, you know, discussion. Recently on the Dodowa, Ayikuma, or whatever stretch, nine people or so died. From the VRA bus. Exactly. Okay. And so... But just as you said that, I, I know you were going to go there, but yeah. Canadians, look at what they went through exactly. to break them. And kidnapping is going on. It's here. going on here. We Look have three of our Indian, nationals. The yes. Indian, what they they, they push through to yes. get that person. Yes. But our national, they are gone. They are missing, and and there is no probably. I want to see a certain agency on the part of government. You see, on the part of government, some but sense of agency. Agency agencies responsible. But government is is the superior, and that's why you're calling on. Because government appoints the IGP. The IGP is at the mercy of the president. The IGP is not at my mercy. The president is at my mercy. Because I voted him into power. But I did not vote the IGP. So if we want to call it that way, mine is that we should be calling the president to do his work. Lately, he's always out of the jurisdiction. Exactly. When we have, when, that is when we have so many challenges. What is happening in the north? Kidnapping, armed robberies. Armed robberies, highways. Uh, you know, those days when you hear of armed robbery, highway robberies, it was when you were going up north after Techiman. Yeah. Now we have highway robberies uh, in Potsin, Potsin Central. Potsin. And you ask yourself, you see, the rebel mentality, those who understand these things, when the rebels usually they fight from the jungle and they'll be coming, it takes them sometimes five years to be coming. When they are an hour away from the seat of government, then you know they are very daring. And that is the mentality these people probably now have, that you see, we are daring enough to come to Gomapotsin here, right, yeah. in between police barriers, and rob. Yeah. 
lined up all the cars, robbed all of them. Looking at the number of police checkpoints, if you traveled on that stretch in the night, you count as many be between um, Mori, exactly. which is Mori Junction, mm -hmm. and Budumbura. You exactly. count not less than 19. Exactly. But how come they came all the way to That's what I'm person? saying. It's a lack of leadership. It's lack of leadership because if the person who brings the president every morning and by the national security standards, every demo, not every, every leader in this country, mm -hmm. sorry, every leader in the world, mm -hmm. you are supposed to be briefed the last 24 hours and the next 24 hours. In between, somebody must brief you if you are the president of Ghana. And what if they're telling him that, oh, everything is fine? And that's why he gets onto the job. Exactly. So my point is that if they are not giving him, if probably those around him are not telling, are telling him things that are not factual, it becomes difficult. Because then they are telling you things that are not factual. Everything, oh, everything is fine. fine. Oh, BBI, oh, uh, press, 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 do. No. Every BBI, come up. Meanwhile, the people are suffering. So until such a time that he himself would get people outside that enclave who would sometimes tell him president things are not going right mm -hmm. until such a time that that is done this kidnappings and because then it is only when he's properly brief we have a problem at hand. then they tell him president we have a problem at hand when is almost too late i i can we ever be able to stop that's why i want to conclude this can we oh, can we can, can we, we stop can this, we stop it the kidnapping it would take that political will mm. we the president would have to be tough when i say the president would have to be tough if it means either uh, getting the right persons to do the right things mm. or uh, putting in measures, mm. committing more resources, mm. because as we speak, if I mean I try to use a lot of science mm. in doing this, because then uh, the days of miracles. I'm not sure whether we still have the days of miracles today. Mm. And if you don't plant a corn, mm. you don't reap. You don't reap <laughs> corn. Whatever you plant is what yes. You're going to reap. And so if we fail to put in the resources, the border areas are checked. Mm. Police officers are trained. Those who are coming in, are uh, we profile them right. Mm. Those who are committing crime, we have the crime uh, database where I can go into if I want to employ somebody. I pay, let's say, five Ghana cities, and I check the person, whether the person has come in. When we put in all these things, then kidnappings and violent crimes and all those things will stop. But until such a time that that is done, it will be difficult for me to sit on this and network say, and say, oh, oh, it is going to, I pray that it will stop. As for that prayer, no, God doesn't answer, answer those, those prayers. prayers. No, because he won't answer those prayers. Be because then, yeah, yeah, because the truth is that uh, when the criminal is going to uh, commit a crime, he prays. Mm. Okay? Mm. He could be praying to go and commit a crime. God. But if he's successful, he, he knows his God. He knows his God somewhere was good. Oh. But if he's not successful, uh, he's caught. And so mine is that prayer, we need to be very careful the way sometimes we refuse to add signs to whatever we do, and we draw more on, uh, on, on, on prayer. On prayer. Coming back to it, um, I, there's this question running through my mind. The Canadian girls were rescued within a short time. What was so extraordinary compared to how long these Takradi girls have been missing? Is it because of color? So it could be that these ones were taken out of the country. But it still baffles me how uh, we've treated the Canadian issue and rescued them, but we still can't find the tech radical. Okay. In, 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 you know, my statements this morning, what, I've, what I probably put out there has to do with training of police officers. Mm. Because when this, they, they, there is a sharp difference between the Canadians issue, even though they are both, you know, kidnappings or missing, mm -hmm. but, we, you know, they have been found between them and these people. When, it, it, call it the major kidnapping case that in recent years has happened, is a Takradi one. Yeah. It is purported, is we are told, I mean, I, I'm in contact mm -hmm. with most of this, they are victim families. They went to the police station to report. If you've gone to a police station to report before, you see a counter NCO, a non-commissioned officer, mm -hmm. who is sitting there, very young. I don't know whether you have a young person. Very young, maybe uh, 22, 25. Sitting there and sometimes very bullish, very arrogant. 
Yeah, now we soon have a better report. Tell you, you are coming to report on this. Oh, he, they, are, they, uh, they are with their boyfriends, they will come back. Hmm. They, are, they are with their boyfriends, they will come back. But if that counter NCO had been trained to ask questions and not just throw it through the, you know, flush it down. Like the checklist that you talked about. We, we would have had a situation where this kidnap, this Takradi girls would have been found. Mm. But because, you see, the time in, by, by the time the police took it serious, mm. it was almost late. When they took it serious, it was almost late. To the extent that the, the first suspect broke police cell and mm. bolted and he was rearrested in four days. Mm. And so mine is that timeliness when it comes to rescuing kidnapping persons or missing persons and all that 48 hours if after that this information is not out there every day they keep moving them mm. depending on how they themselves the reconnaissance whatever information they pick from you know surveillance uh, they it looks like there are some strange people coming around so they wait you might not know mm. in the night they pick them from that location to so another, another location. location but in the case of the kidnapping of the Canadian. Of the Canadian. The Uber driver, from his account, when you dropped the girls, I think the one of them in front, had to pay the driver. Yeah. So it looks like he might have waited a bit in the vehicle. So the two girls who came out first were taken. So the driver sped off to the police station, to the next police station and reported. Even that when, according to the report, when he, on the way, he saw some patrol uh, officers yeah. in their vehicle told them that some people have kidnapped two of the two of these people. Mm -hmm. They're again training. They told they directed them to go to the police station and they took the opposite direction and they left. That's the police people. They went. The first encounter with the patrol team. Instead of the patrol team going on their radio to almost Let's, instantly mm -hmm. alert all divisions and all police stations to Stop Be to say board. to every say vehicle. every vehicle within this metropolis should stop. You yeah, that is what happens. Mm. But we're not trained to that. We're not trained to do that. Where you you know uh, uh, there's almost everything comes to a standstill. Mm. It didn't happen. They, I'm sure they are going to eat something because of they, time. Because I've gotten, yeah, go. Yeah. You want so to they they the, the kidnappers you. went away. The police patrol team who had gotten who were almost at the scene also went and said go and report. So they went to a police station and reported. And I'm sure at that time the police station didn't even have a vehicle. So it took time. Then it became news. And so within an hour, there was a report. Mm. But with this, maybe after a day or so, the report was made. But how did the police treat it? How they treated it probably then reinforces what you are saying. Because for me, I'm sure the, when the Uber driver went to the police, police station, station and said uh, i picked these foreigners and they, it looks like some people mm. have kidnapped them the police took it serious mm. but we need to also somehow uh, speak well and praise the police and the security agencies for kid uh, rescuing these canadians. canadians but let's also not forget that after the incident in takrade every other proper kidnapping situation we've had all the victims have been rescued apart from the the Takrade one. In Takrade, a young boy mm. was kidnapped. You remember? Yeah. By a woman. Woman, yeah. And a camera captured it. Yeah. And with that, within 24 hours, the woman was arrested. She's even been sentenced. Sentenced. Yeah. And the young boy rejoined uh, with the, the family. Parent, yeah. Then we had uh, one that happened around the uh, Amasama. Amas yeah. Where I think the house boy died, mm. but the, the kidnappers were arrested and the woman freed. And the kidnappers are serving jail, jail sentence. sentence. Yeah. Then we have uh, the Estonian uh, diplomat, Lebanese Estonian diplomat. Yeah. Yeah. He was also freed. Yeah. Then we have the, what's the name? The guy in, uh, the, the one in Kumasi. The Indian one. The Indian one. Yeah. He was also, Rest when they were narrowing in on them, they, he broke off and, you know, ran off. And we've had other copycats missing a kidnapping situation where young girls had gone to uh, they go to their boyfriends and they say, oh, call my father and say you've kidnapped me and most of the boys were arrested i think one of them was even jailed mm -hmm. 
And, and recently, so, the, the, the pastor who had actually faked his own kidnap. Exactly. And so we've had incidents like that. But apart from the Takra Day one, yes. all of them have been rescued or found. What we haven't been able to do is to put in enough measures to make sure this thing does not... People are not kidnapped. Mm. What We haven't done that to say this thing is not supposed to be part of us. It should, we shouldn't begin to accept it like the way we've accepted accidents. Accident. You know when an accident yeah. happens, so, oh, why did it happen? Mm. Over speeding, mm. then, then the next day... It ends. Just like the fire outbreaks. A yes. Properties bent down. They said, oh, electrical fire. Uh, uh, we've right. accepted it. Right. If we are not, the day we begin to accept kidnapping, kidnapping. we are finished. Finally, I mean, um, I was going to ask you if the police are on top of it, but you've highlighted quite a number of, of rescues that they've done and, and rescued the people. But um, you look looking at the scenarios, recent before the CID had Madame Tio herself had said something that they had found there, and then the controversy started, and people were so upset. I've heard another one about a, a secret. Br Japan. Brian, Brian, my honorable Brian, I trampled. That's right. <laughs> also, saying almost the same thing. Yes. As, and, and was it necessary? It wasn't. It's, it's, you know, when you've heard about conspiracy theories, or oh, how Reagan was shot, how JFK, okay. you yeah. know, how Tupac yeah. is not dead. Yeah. And uh, how Castro, Castro is still, Castro is still in Togo. Yeah. These are conspiracy, and leaders shouldn't say things that would propel or make some of these conspiracy theories a bit more uh, genuine. Because you have a newspaper that is owned by Freddie Blay saying that the girls are in Ghana, and the newspaper has not retracted that story. Do you get what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say? And uh, we've had statements afterwards. So to have the Honorable Minister of State at the President's National Security come up to, what do you call it, uh, make such a comment, mm -hmm. what I will say that, is there something some of us are not aware of? Are you on the ground? I'm on, but you see, I'm on the ground and I pick a lot of information. But this hasn't come to But mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I say that these girls are fine. I say that these girls are fine. I say these girls are fine because there's something that somebody is not telling us. Mm. But I know most often you are ahead of us Yes, all. yes. I, I'm being careful. careful. Yes. I can say the girls are fine, but mine is that mm. Mm. Uh, somebody mm. is not become, somebody is not mm. coming swift which, mm. you know, is mm. not reporting these things the way... So you have a lot of information, that is a bit of it retracted, reframed, and then... So let's go by what Brian Achampon said, so that the girls are alive, alive. Mm. and they are doing well. That's what I can say. But I think that uh, we need to demand more questions. First questions, yeah. Are they in Ghana? Because I know the <laughs> BNI former director left this country. Mm. I said it and it became a big issue. Adam Bonas said this, Adam Bonas said that. But yes, I know the day he left Ghana, I know what he traveled out there to go and do all the things he... I mean, I know everything. In our conversation, I've got two questions lined up for you and we have to do that in the next two and a half to three minutes. But in our conversation, I almost brought this up, but you brought it, so I'll chip it in there and ask you if I was right. Looking at the two, three Takradi girls, if the kidnappers are moving with them to the border, how porous our borders are. Oh, very porous. And they porous. have a gun sitting with them. Nobody would look, because I have a colleague who's told me that any time they are going to Cote d'Ivoire with their children, nobody even asks them. And what? so they could have taken anybody's child. Let me tell you, it is easy to bribe a border official. Mm. It is easy to go and bribe a border official. I mean, I don't want to create scenarios. Mm. But somebody, a video camera captured the last days of these girls in this country. Mm. A petrol station camera. Somebody saw something. Somebody reported something. I don't know what has come to it. And so, uh, the, it was easy. I mean, it's easy to take them out of this country. Nobody is checking anybody. Nobody's taking anybody. We're walking and out. Just walking. You just go thing. and it's just walking in and out. Adam, 
two or three of maximum four security um, tips that would make somebody be careful when it comes to kidnapping, what you should walk out, watch out for, especially mothers, their daughters, or their children in general, the younger ones. We, we don't take security seriously. And I started by saying that we don't realize that facing your, your back facing an oncoming vehicle is a security threat to yourself, and safety is actually reduced to zero. What tips would you give us? And then when you're done, I don't want to come in again. Your business, tell us what you do, okay. and then we'll wrap up. My first tip is going to be stop blocking your ears with headsets. You are walking on the street, young girls, young boys. I'm sure uh, there are times sometimes you are almost running over one of them because they are listening to some... The plugs are in The plugs are and they are listening to music and they fail to uh, notice anything around the them. The volume is even very Vo volume is so... Those who are listening should caution themselves. Anybody, the element of surprise and security. Because once you are blinded by the music, you are paying attention to whatever is going on. As I said, I'm paying attention to you. Mm. Whatever is happening behind me, I might not be able to see it. Right. But when there is a noise, because I'm talking to you and nothing is blocking my ear, I could turn. turn. And, see what and so yeah. people should stop blocking their ears, whether at home. I've, I've visited crime scenes where the people literally broke into the house and started robbing the house. And the person was lying on her bed. They robbed everything, left. The person came down and realized that they used blocks and whatever to tear down the, uh, uh, the entrance. The entrance. Came in, robbed everything from downstairs and left. And the person was still lying in her bed upstairs. upstairs. Because she had... Uh, ear plugs. Ear plugs was playing loud music at dawn, around 3 a.m. Hmm. So those who are listening, and it meant what it meant was that this woman could have been kidnapped in her own house. Mm. Those who are listening should desist from that. Apart from that, stop putting your children and whatever the school they go to on. You know, uh, be careful. Maybe some graduation, whatever. But you see, people are putting everything about their social life on social media you do that you are you are literally just telling people how much money you have mm -hmm. it means that if you are telling me your child is in this school uh, chances are that hey, you can you pay. pay yeah <laughs> if your child is in this school you can pay so they go and wait for so they go and wait for your child or they wait when you are the more with your child mm -hmm. and uh, you are not looking before you see the child is gone when people go to these malls or busy places have the children not don't let the children follow you Follow the children. Mm. Don't let your children follow you anymore. Now you follow the children and have your eyes on the children. At all times. At all times. Have your eyes on the children. And when you suspect you can't find them, inform security to block the exit and the entrances. Make sure you know the police Number. emergency numbers. Mm. 191. And then... 18555. Five. Yeah. That should be on your speed dial. Know your one nearest police. 18555. Five. Yes. It should be on the speed dial. On your speed dial. Okay. Make sure you know the nearest police station, how far the nearest police station is from where you stay. So you're saying that if you go into every community, for instance, I live in Dansama, so I move into Kanda area, I should know where the Nima police station is. Know where. So wherever you're going, yes. no. For, I'm leaving um, Accra to Tema, exactly. Community One. So then I tell myself, if I'm going to Community One Market, I should know the police station. Exactly. All right. Know the police station. Mm -hmm. Once you know all this, what it is is that somebody might be following you, mm -hmm. and you can run straight to that police station. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And for what we do, uh, Security Warehouse, Global Trackers, Security Warehouse is the largest electronic security company mm. in the sub-region. We install, you know, the ghost CCTVs. It, when they are installed, they are invisible. You don't see them. But usually what happens is that when people rob your home, uh, they steal the recorder. Mm -hmm. By this time around, the recorder is an invisible recorder. It's not cloud-based, but it's an invisible recorder you don't see. And we have the automated, solar automated gate systems. Somebody might be following you. You can't do pee, 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 pee for them to open the gate. So you press and it's open. We have the, you know, time and attendance systems. Mm -hmm. And so uh, those who are listening, if you visit uh, www.securityhousegh.com, 
you will find all array of things. And we also have the fleet management company, mm -hmm. Global Trackers, where we are into, the, we have the largest fleet platform okay. where we track vehicles, uh, you know, with GPS systems and satellite systems. So your vehicle is not stolen, you know. Wow. Uh, your commercial, you have a fleet of vehicles for commercial yeah, purposes, yeah. you are able to do that. And apart from that, even tagging children, being able to uh, put, we put tags on children that when they are missing, it helps you at least the first one hour, two, three hours, you are able to know where they are. So these are some of the things we do at Security Warehouse. Mm -hmm.